Hello, comrades, and welcome back to Shanka Show. Здравствуйте, дорогие товарищи. В эфире программа Shanka Show. Stories from the USSR. My name is Sergei Nikolaevich Sputnikov, and back in 1971 I was born in the Soviet Union. Меня зовут Сергей Спутников, я родился в Советском Союзе. So today we're going to talk about Jewish people in the Soviet Union, and I know this topic is quite... Uh, let's put it challenging. Uh, I was putting it off for, for quite a long time, but we need to just plow through it and uh, talk about it and see what happens. But before we begin, I would like to thank all my Patreon supporters for your help. Thank you so much. It really helps to concentrate on the topics, not on trends, not at what uh, gets the most views and likes and clicks. So thank you so much. Your help is greatly appreciated. I mean, YouTube itself is an amazing tool. It made it possible for a regular person to share stories with the whole world, but their analytics sometimes are so annoying because they constantly push you to make videos that get the most amount of clicks, the most amount of views, most amount of likes. If I would listen to YouTube, I'll be just making everything, all my stories about Chernobyl and Soviet food. And I also have a public announcement before we begin. If you are sensitive on the topic of Jewish people, anti-Semitic topics. You probably don't want to watch this video. I already got a couple of guys commenting on my video about bald and bankrupt when I uh, said a joke uh, about uh, Jewish people always answering with question to the question that called me anti-Semitic. Uh, there'll be more jokes in this video. It was the part of the culture and we have to talk about it. So if you can handle it, please... Uh, uh, don't watch this video. If you follow my channel, uh, you should know by now that I'm a, how would you say it in English, odd duck. By my nationality, I'm an Ukrainian, but I'm a Soviet Ukrainian, which means I grew up speaking Russian. Russian was always my first language. Ukrainian second. Now my, I don't know, Russian and English probably like together and uh, Ukrainian would be my third language. And also, I'm 2% Jewish uh, when I change, uh, checked my uh, DNA with Ancestry.com. And I always consider myself Soviet. You know, it's kind of interesting. Out of all Slavic people, at least in the Soviet Union, so we're talking Russians, Ukrainians, and uh, Belarusians, Ukrainians were considered the most Jewish-like people. We had a lot of jokes about similarities and um, one of my i don't say favorite but it's when the first ukrainian was born uh, the jewish uh, person uh, sat down and started crying but before we get rolling uh, let's have a quick lesson of russian language урок русского языка еврей еврей so еврей is a jewish male person еврей еврейка Еврейка. So that's a Jewish female. Еврейка. There is also offensive noun for Jews. It's жид. Жид. And it's similar to what in English they say. Cake. Cake. So жид is an offensive noun for male Jewish person. But I believe in Polish language it's how they call Jews. Жиды. That's the normal word. In Ukrainian, old Ukrainian language had Zhid as a Jewish person, but later they got Yevrei, and uh, then offensively they'll call somebody Zhid. And then Zhidovka, Zhidovka, they'll be a female Jewish person, and it's also kind of an offensive uh, noun, Zhidovka. And it's kind of interesting uh, when I was talking to my father a couple of weeks ago, uh, questioning him about the uh, events of the World War II when my grandmother, his mother, was hiding a Jewish lady when Germans came to their village. My dad, asked, in his language he used, he said, yeah, uh, my mother was hiding that Zhidovka. So there was kind of like a nicer way of putting, uh, he didn't say Zhidovka, Zhidovka. So that's a little bit nicer. It's like, I call vodka Vodachka. So that's a nicer way. So, Zhidovachka instead of Zhidovka. But my dad used that term in our recent conversation. 
And you know, despite the fact that in Soviet Union we talked all the time about all the nations are equal, we still had a lot of anti-Semitism going on on domestic level, like in everyday life of Soviet people, as well as on a state level. Which is kind of strange because many of the Russian revolutionaries were uh, Jewish people, list is long, and that's one of the topics for conversation that was actually like a Jewish plot uh, to destroy Mother Russia. I remember reading somewhere that even Vladimir Ilyich Ulyanov Lenin, which is totally Russian name, had a Jewish grandmother. Then, of course, there is a Leon Bronstein Trotsky, a son of the wealthy Ukrainian Jewish farmer, Lev Borisovich Kamenev, whose actual last name was Rosenfeld, and the guy who made a bad bet and joined forces with Comrade Stalin against power struggle with Trotsky, and later he was thanked by being shot in 1936 for being a member of Trotsky Zinovsk Center. And of course, we need to mention Grigory Zinoviev, original name Gershon Aronovich Radomelsky, born 1883 in a wealthy Jewish farmer family, once again in Ukraine. He was a huge supporter of Lenin. In fact, he was a second Bolshevik after Lenin. And once again, he made a bad decision. He played a role in promoting Stalin and got shot in 1936 in Lubyanka prison. What I find the most interesting fact about Grigory Zinoviev is that he was hiding together with Lenin in the little uh, tent, so-called Shalash, on the Lake Razliv. So that's one of the famous Soviet Jesus Lenin stories we uh, were taught in schools and kindergartens. Lenin had to run away from St. Petersburg when um, temporary government, Vremena uh, Pravidestva, declared Bolshevik party illegal. So they had to run away from uh, St. Petersburg and hide. So Zinovia was hiding with Lenin together, but it was, he was never mentioned. I was always under impression that Lenin was there by himself. Sorry for this little detour. Uh, so back to the topic of the Jewish people in Soviet Union. If we talk about being a Yevrie in the Soviet Union, we need to talk about Soviet passport. By the way, I already have a, a couple of videos on the topic of the Soviet documents. Uh, two of them called most important documents in the Soviet Union. You're welcome to check those out. You'll learn a lot about documents and all the papers that we had to carry or own back in the Soviet days. Our Soviet passport was uh, the internal documents. We had a different passport for traveling to other countries. This was a passport uh, for inside, and it had a lot of useful information for the authorities, like your Prapiska. If you remember, I talked about it. Everyone had to be assigned to a specific address, and it was called Prapiska. Also, after getting married, Soviet boys and girls would get an ink stamp in their passports indicating that they got married in such date in such town. And that was actually a very effective tool for the girls. If they um, like the guy and the guy really wants to move forward, but she's not sure if he's single or married, she could just ask, hey, can I see your passport? It happened quite often. And then uh, if you're a married guy that's just uh, trying to goof around, you'll get busted because your passport didn't lie. The Soviet passports also had so-called Pyataya Grafa, the fifth column or the fifth line. That's where your nationality will be written down. So in my passport, unfortunately, I can't locate it. I know I have it somewhere. It said Ukrainian. While if you are a Jewish person in the Soviet Union, your fifth column your Pyata Grafa will say Yevrie, Jewish. So if your fifth column says Yevrie, it means that you couldn't get some jobs or you couldn't get to a specific college and there'll be this kind of lingua going on like, hey, what about this guy? Uh, he looked like a decent worker and then now he has a problem with his fifth column when your problem is Pyata Grafoi. Some Jewish people were so desperate that they attempted to change their nationality record, so change their fifth column. Usually it could be done uh, through marriage. So if you marry a Russian, uh, you can change your nationality to Russian, or you probably could do it through the bribes or 
find some distant uh, relative way back like hey he was Russian so I would like to change my nationality to Russian but of course uh, if you look like a Jewish person it doesn't matter if your uh, fifth column says that you're Russian and we actually had a joke about that so one Jewish guy calls another and yells like hey we need to run there's a bunch of drunken uh, Russian workers marching down the street and they beat everyone who is Jewish and his friend answers oh I don't care my passport says I'm Russian and his buddy answers right but they don't punch the passports they punch the faces so let's talk about how could you recognize that the person is Jewish or not first of all of course uh, facial uh, features like a lot of Jewish people they have a dark uh, hair mostly it will be wavy uh, they may have a a little bit oversized pointy nose I mean I'm talking some stereotypes but it's also uh, truth of course dark big eyes uh, maybe a large forehead so just by the face you usually could recognize a Jewish person quite easy so let's take a look at my kindergarten photo uh, which was taken sometimes around 1977 and let's see how many Jewish uh, children or adults uh, can you recognize. And what's funny about this picture, I never knew as a kid who were uh, Jewish children in our group. And I also didn't realize how pretty was our music teacher that the blonde chick in the middle in the background. And only when I saw that photo a couple of years ago, I was cleaning my archives and I looked and it jumped at me, first of all, how pretty my music teacher was and also how many uh, Jewish children I had in group and I never paid attention. And you can pause this video and study the photo and then we will discuss uh, and compare our results. So this is what I got and I, I don't know for sure if they were Jewish but uh, I'm just guessing based on the picture. So this older lady next to my uh, hot uh, music teacher, she definitely looks Jewish. On the far left, uh, kids standing, uh, that boy looks Jewish. I think he was Jewish. And the girl in this interesting dress right next to him definitely 100% was Jewish. A short, uh, serious kid right next to the uh, girl in that uh, dress also looks Jewish to me. And this two looks like twin girls, one on the far left, one on the far right, uh, definitely uh, Jewish girls. But I just want to mention that we played just fine. I never had anything like, oh, don't play with these kids or play with these kids. Uh, back in the kindergarten, uh, we all were playing outside, had no national problems or any issues. Okay, Tavarishi, so this concludes part one, uh, life of the Jewish people in the Soviet Union. I hope you enjoyed this video, learned something new, and we'll talk to you soon. Do svidanie. Goodbye. to have a signed copy thank you and if you love my channel and would like to show your support please click on the link below this video and become the patron of the Oshanka show for as little as one dollar you can help us grow and create the new interesting videos about the life and so